My daughter and I found this lawnmower for free on the side of the road. We made it into this functional electric mini truck and used it all fall to move firewood and get ready for winter. Now we're gonna finish up the dump bed, the floor, brakes, lights, as well as a few other things. I'll put the products in the description. This is one eighth inch thick aluminum sheet left over from a sculpture entitled Playhouse. After I took down this piece from the gallery, I installed it in our yard as a functional playhouse with an aluminum slide. If you don't have aluminum or the ability to weld it, you can make your truck bed out of steel or even wood. A lot of people are scared of working with aluminum, and I'm not gonna say that it doesn't have its quirky qualities, but the nice thing about aluminum is that you can use the same tools that you cut wood to cut it. I use a circular saw with a regular wood cutting blade to cut out the big pieces. It's really loud, so make sure you wear ear protection. For the miters and cross cuts, I use a slide gauge on a bandsaw with a regular wood cutting blade. The metal blades with the small teeth will get loaded up with the chips and stop cutting almost instantly. I made these brackets that connect to the bolts that were in the original lawnmower. Working up from these pivots, I connect the bed. I had the bed on last fall to move the firewood, but it didn't have the mechanism to hold it in place, so it was just wired down. So it didn't dump, nor did it have a tailgate. We used this little truck bed to move dirt, firewood, and all kinds of other things. It's a pretty slow moving vehicle, so without much go, it doesn't need much woe. But after a few wild rides going down some hills, it became apparent that I needed to put some brakes on this thing. The plasma cutter was a good tool for a lot of this job. It will cut right through steel, and if you move it quickly, you'll just put some textured lines into it. This stainless steel turnbuckle that was kicking around will work perfectly for an adjustable link in the mechanism. I used a torch hooked up to an acetylene e-tank in order to bend it. Since so many plumbers are transferring away from copper pipes, you can pick up these B-tanks used for practically nothing. I'm really just winging it with scraps that I have around the studio. I didn't have any drums or rotors, but I did have these old casters, so I decided to give them a try. First I needed to remove the bearings, then I needed to make an adapter so it would fit on the axle. I used an old piece of pipe and a little bit of wire to make up the difference and then welded the whole thing together. These are the brake pads that create the friction to slow it down. And honestly, that's all it does is slow it down. I do not recommend this setup. When I get some time, I'm going to ditch these pads and make a strap that goes all the way around the tire to add more friction. In the meantime, you just have to plan your downhill descents with a run out or a cutback. I cut up some more bed frames for the steel to make the floor. I collect them from dumpsters. You can even find them on the side of the road. The steel is hardened, so best use a friction blade to cut them up. But be careful because they're totally spring loaded. I found some rusted expanded metal, wire brush it off and it makes a great floor. Finishing the lights was fun because B could help me again. She did learn how to weld, but she didn't really have any interest in helping me. I don't blame her. It's a loud, dirty, nasty job. So this first part, I'm still on my own. I'm moving the hood mounts forward so I can reuse the front body part of the original lawnmower. This will hold the lights and also clean up the front a bit. I added some steel, marked where the hood should go, then cut it off to length. Then I welded the pivot points back on. The hood was too narrow so I had to bend it out until it was wide enough. I used cardboard to make a template for the aluminum dashboard. After cutting out the shape, I started making the holes for the switches and voltmeter. A jigsaw is good for this job. Make sure the jigsaw is set to zero rake, and again, use a wood cutting blade. After that, you can clean up the holes with a file. I used a wire wheel and an angle grinder to finish it off. Now it's time to put it all together. I'm happy that B can help me again. For a 10 year old, she's very mechanically inclined. We work on things together and sometimes we work on different things at the same time. Working with her is my life's greatest joy. I'm so grateful that she's willing and able to do these types of projects with me. 
I hope that she learns to recognize the potential in the tools and materials as resources to make her life a better place without taking things for granted. And I get to learn so much about myself and how to be a better person from her. This little electric truck is something that we will have and use for a long time. The blue bailey because it's combining orange and it's nice. So a bench seat was important to our design. We wanted to be able to ride around together, get things done. The other thing that was important to our design was a dump bed. This one has a tailgate so we can load up our stuff. And to dump it, we have this handle here locked into the frame right here. Pull this and it canters back. These were actually bolts that came with the, the original lawnmower. To put it back, you just slide the handle back in place. The other thing that we wanted to do is have some lights on it. So we use this at night. So we have a couple of lights here. These are our regular running lights, the regular lights right here. And then we have a bigger light. There's a switch right here. That gives a bunch of light out. Down here, we have a spotlight. Um, and this is for being able to direct that light wherever you want. It's always handy right here in this little storage compartment. So it just lives right here. We also have a voltmeter. So that's pretty handy, especially if you're got a long day of work and you want to make sure that uh, you don't run out of juice on the low, medium, and high. When you have it in low, the foot pedal becomes a little bit less sensitive so you can work your way through the woods and over rocks and so forth. The whole thing is very torquey. So underneath the hood here, this is our dirt cover. Under here is the batteries and motor and motor controller that all came with a $450 kit. This right here is a transformer box that actually reduces the 48 volts down to 12 volts for the light. This is the original pulley that came on the drive shaft of the lawnmower. And I put a pulley on the bottom of this motor in order to utilize that because a chain in a horizontal position like this would wear out the, um, the sprockets and you'd have a maintenance issue. This is our blue mule. It's become part of the family. It's our go-to. It's super functional. Have so many things that we've done with it. Have so many things that we want to do with it. We love it. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Good luck with all your greenhouse gas reduction projects.